Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Wow, that's a little hot on the audio. How y'all doing this morning? My name is Tom Rigsby, your coach. Here to talk about some interesting stuff this morning on today's installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. I got a lot of moving pieces going here, so I'm going to try and get a uh, uh, look down here and get a little bit of work done. And We'll get there, though. It'll be a good day. Chicken's over there. She said good morning. And there's chicken back here over my shoulder. So listen, hey, uh, when you join, if you'll leave me a comment, just say hi. Let me know that you're here. That will accomplish two things for us. Number one, lets me know that you're here. That's encouraging to me. And number two, it'll set you up to hear from the chicken. It'll set you up to get uh, a notification from Facebook every time the comments are updated here. And that's where some of the best stuff happens is in the comments from and between you guys, if you happen to be listening on your podcast app, you can join us live every morning for the conversation on Facebook. Just go to TomRigsby.com slash Facebook. That'll get you to the right page. And uh, you can watch us here. Comment. Put your two cents worth in with uh, with everything I've got going on. So a couple of good mornings to get us started. Hey, Jeremy, Keith, Brooke, and Joe, thank you. Uh, all four of you for being here this morning. <clears throat> I want to begin with a little bit of a follow-up from yesterday. And just to make sure that I get this right, I'm going to look down here for just a minute. Yesterday I talked about a quote from Seth Godin that said, You are not your resume, you are your work. You're not your resume, you are your work. So I debated about whether or not to do a whole episode on this, which I could easily do a lot longer on this, but I just want to touch on this because I got a great one for this morning also. <clears throat> the point of that quote and the point of our conversation yesterday was produce results. Be focused on creating results. And that, that is your work. That is what speaks volumes about you. What I did not want you to take away from that, and I thought about this afterwards, um, is that you are defined by your work, which is very uh, common, actually, for people to be defined by their work, especially among men. I, it's like, hey, Joe, my name's Tom. Hey, Tom, how are you doing? What do you do? First question we ask, right? And And, and so we let that work that we do define us. Here's how I define work, and uh, this is going to be the, the update, and then we'll move on to today's topic. The work is the net value you leave behind. Net value, because it's okay to be paid for the work that you do, but value, the net value that you leave behind. It's not the title that you have on your business card. It's not necessarily even the role that you play. Right? The work that you do is the net value that you leave behind. Right? So don't be defined by your work, but define value with your work. Okay? All right. See, I told you I could easily do a whole episode on that. Uh, so, in between topics here, Vicky says there's the chick out already. She's right over here somewhere. Um, I, I can hear her objecting to me interrupting her quiet morning over here. Co-presenters had a few chirps. Yep, Joe's, uh, Joe, Keith has heard her. Uh, and Joe says, most baby boomers identify themselves as their career being a primary factor. Yeah, and that, you know, here's... I, I thought about it this way long before the events of this past weekend, so don't let that dissuade you anyway, uh, or think that it's influenced my thinking in any way. It is kind of a morbid thought. You get to your last day and you're laying there on your deathbed. What are you going to be proud of? You know, I mean, I want it to be, I want it to have meaning. I want to have created value. I want to have left something, left that legacy. And I am to see this another topic I can get way off on. A legacy is not some big monolith. Right? It's thousands of tiny little little stones, little pebbles that you leave behind that make the path easier for the people that come after you. Right? It's it's the net value that you leave behind. Alright, 
right, so I want to get to today's quote. Let me hop over so I can uh, get that, see that. Because this is a topic I didn't want to leave. I didn't want to skip for it to come around in the rotation again. Um, I have said to you before, say frequently, that success uh, is a state. If we think about success and failure, as much as I dislike using the failure word, if we think about success and failure as states that we can move into and out of, then that changes our thinking about what we're pursuing, right? Because we, we tend to think societally, we are trained to believe that success is some destination. And when I get there, I cross that finish line, boom, I'm successful. And that that lasts forever. But the truth is, some noise going on over there. The truth is that you can move into and out of that success state. The best way that I've found to demonstrate this is using baseball as an analogy, right? In uh, American in American professional baseball, uh, Major League Baseball, I play 162 games a year. 162 games a year, right? No team's ever won every game. Yet every year somebody wins the World Series. Right? So on any given day, they can win a game. That's a successful state. On any other given day, they could lose a game. That's a failure state. But if you have more successes than you have failures, and you have those successes at the right time, your overall campaign, right, the season, can be a successful one. Now you have... <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. I need a little bit of coffee this morning. You have to have those successes at the right time. You can win. You could conceivably win every game in the season and lose every game in the postseason, and then you're you don't have a successful season, right? So here's the quote that got me started on all this. And this one's actually an anonymous quote: uh, "Success is never owned; it is rented, and the rent is due every day. You never own it. You don't get to keep it forever. It's something that." Maybe you can check out the library, but you got to take back. But here's the thing to take away from this. And, and this is why it's so important. And, and I talk about these being states all the time. Because we think we can never fail. We set ourselves up and, and even filter the opportunities that we pursue based solely on whether we think we can succeed or not. And yet... In the end, the most, res the most rewarding ones are the ones that there was a risk of failure, right? So, um, in the whole uh, risk-success continuum, right, if there's no risk of failure, then it's not really that big a deal. Think about riding a bike. First time you got on a bike, a lot of risk, right? Might fall, might not make it. In fact, probably did fall off some skin knees there. But over the years, you've learned how to ride a bike. Now there's no risk involved in it anymore. It's not, it's not you don't get to the end of the driveway and jump off and, and celebrate anymore. Why not? Because there's no risk involved in it anymore, right? And we, we, we say that we're mitigating risk, right? But really what we're doing is just not taking any risks. You've got to take some risk if you want to get some reward. That's just the way the math works out on that. So, all right, great quote coming up here from Joe. I'm sure creating a difference through sharing and contribution will not only move you closer to success, it will become your core ideology. Yep, absolutely. Create an ideology that is complementary to your legacy and you will influence millions. That positive outlook will change the lives of those you touch. Align, see, this is uh, one of the key words that I teach in the Threads program is alignment, right? Make sure that everything you do is aligned with your vision and with your goals, right? If you do, and now we talk about it here in terms of using your goal or your vision, your definition of success as a filter, right? Does this activity move me closer to my goal? Risky or not, doesn't matter. Does this activity move me closer to my goal? If it does, then I should do it. If it doesn't, then I should not do it. That's how you apply the filter. But that's a very micro way of looking at the macro idea of alignment. Right? If you want to 
Uh, I'll tell a story on my wife here. So, because I know she's watching. We'll see if I get a dirty look out the door here. Um, at one point, we, we were situated in such a way so that um, she had an opportunity for a career change. And she had wanted to be a nurse for a long time. So I said, well, hey, why don't you start working in the field somewhere, somehow? And she found a pretty expeditious way <laughs> to get into the healthcare field, did that, worked in that field for a while, and then found out that that it wasn't what she expected it to be. That that career field probably wasn't something that she wanted to do long term. Well, I don't, I don't think that was a loss at all. I mean, she had a life goal, a life desire to work in healthcare. She achieved that. She found out. Um, she got the, you know, the daily reward from being able to help people, and she found out that if I pursue this path, I'm not going to find the same level of satisfaction that I thought I would, right? So, but a lot of people do that. You know, we were talking about your work when we got started on the show this morning. A lot of people work in fields that they don't enjoy because that's the, the degree they have or that's the job they have and that's where all my experience is and nobody's going to hire me to do anything else and whatever other excuse you want to make, right? Alignment. Find alignment so that uh, the work that you do aligns with your goals, your values, your vision. And I'm telling you, the whole road will just open up out in front of you. All right? Hey, uh, Joe Nell, it said Eric. Yep, absolutely, I believe that. Uh, <laughs> Eric said he would celebrate at the end of the driveway today. I actually believe you would, sir. <laughs> Uh, risk is perception, but I still won't walk on hot coals with Tony Robbins. Yeah, yeah. Entrepreneurs test everything. Great test. Yeah, risk is a perception. That's why experience also mitigates risk, Joe. Right? The, the more that we try something, this is like riding a bike. The more often we do it, the more confidence we build because of our experience. And with that confidence comes a reduction in our perception of risk. Right? You may not want to walk on hot coals. Let's say, for example, that I'm a hot coal walker and I've been doing it for years. I don't see any risk in it. It's easy. Just, you know, lay them out there and boom and psh, and there we go. We're done. Right? You, on the other hand, see a great deal of risk in it. Right? It's the same feet walking across the same coals. All right, that's it for today. Thank you all for being here. Hey, um, oh wait, there's some more boy, good stuff coming in this morning in the comments. Y'all keep that coming. I heard the other day, do the next good thing, I get you down the line to your goal. Yep, the next good thing could be making the bed. Yeah, it's little steps, progress, not perfection. Yeah, it could be little things. And I, and I actually heard this, I was uh, one of the podcasts that I listened to, um, he was talking yesterday about if you have this big goal, or uh, and actually he was talking about in terms of habits. If you have this big habit that you're trying to create and it seems too big, cut it in half. Just do half of it, right? Does hey, if you, I mean, if you're trying to uh, meditate for 10 minutes or stretch for 10 minutes and that's too long, try five minutes, right? If you're trying to run uh, a 5K, start out with a 1K, <laughs> right? Cut it down to a size where you can you can begin. And it might be something simple, just like making the bed so you start your day with a success. Whatever it is for you, that's what you need to do. Do that. Begin making progress and then build on that momentum as you go. Vicky says, it's hard to turn away from something when people tell you you're so good at it. Yeah. I agree. I assume you are talking about, I don't know, I don't want to assume what you're talking about. It can be difficult when people tell you you're good at something, but that's not what's giving you fulfillment, right? It might be some derivative of that, right? It might be something close to that, or maybe this implementation of what you're pursuing is not giving you the fulfillment, right? There's lots of different reasons why, uh, why you might not be getting that fulfillment out of it, but you definitely have to get some fulfillment out of it, otherwise there's no reason to keep doing it, right? 
All right, well, that's it. Hey, look at that. We're 15 minutes into a seven-minute show. Done two whole shows today. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, just a quick update because some of you have been keeping up with what's going on. Uh, I did go to the doctor yesterday, studied night before last, stayed up all night studying. I don't get my test results back for a couple of days. But as I, I've told several people now, I have more wires coming out of my shirt now than a cheap 70s stereo. So um, we'll see what the results of that is, uh, what the results are for that. Uh, and I'll keep you guys updated. Thanks for your words of encouragement uh, and thoughts and prayers with that. I appreciate those. Going to wrap it up for today. Today is Thursday, Thankful Thursday. What are you thankful for today? Start your day with gratitude and the rest of the day will be easier. I promise you that. I'll be back again tomorrow. Another installment of 7 Minutes in the Morning. Till then, you have a great day.